And what I'm going to do here is just basically look at working with a column base plate example. Um, and working in this area sometimes can be helpful. Just um, begin by starting with a center line. And this would simply be the center line of the column. And in this example, I'm going to use inch and a half equals one foot scale. And for the exercise, I'm going to draw a column that is a W10. And I don't have the final engineering size on it, but I want to get a feel for how the anchor rods and base plates will go. So in this particular scale, each grid is a quarter inch. And so I'm simply going to draw in my column and I'm eyeballing about a half column width there. Paying attention to lift up on the scale and letting the ink dry as I go. Um, when you're starting this, it might be better to start with pencil. Um, for a 10 inch column, I want overhang for my anchor rods to fit down. And so I'm going to start just by experience with a 16 inch by 16. So that's going to be 8 inches each way. 1, 2, 3, 4. In that direction. Now I know that a starter, I could have a base plate that was three quarters of an inch. I'm going to sketch it just right now at one inch. I'm still kind of working out my details on how I want to see that fit together. And typically for a base plate for leveling on one to two story buildings, um, not mid rise or high rise, one inch of non-shrink grout's acceptable for leveling. This has to do with the tolerances of the concrete. I'm going to draw the concrete here that that column's going to come down to. We know from concrete construction that there will be irregularities and tolerances and so typically we'll have non-shrink grout underneath the column and this will be high strength and what happens is the Anchor rods are coming out, uh, out of the concrete. There will be a leveling nut on the anchor rod. It will be used to level the column and base plate. But that's not used to carry all the weight of the building coming down on the column. And that's where the non-shrink grout comes in. This is packed in. And then once it cures, the column load comes down, loads the non-shrink grout, and then goes into the column. And for right now, I'm going to show if each square is two inches at inch and a half scale, I'm going to come in approximately inch, and I'm just going to draw for right now a straight line that sketches where the anchor rods are going to go. And for this type of detail, a straight line is acceptable. And I want to come in and begin to look at just how long the rods would be. For right now, I'm going to simply show the rods going down. That's one foot. I'd like to show the rods going down about 18 inches. And I'm going to show a plate on them. And later in the curriculum, we'll show real base plate details show what these anchor rod plates look like but for a quick sketch that's good enough and it's always good to dimension this. This is the information that might need to go to a technician or a modeler working in the building information modeling application. This is the second the elevation view of the column and if I wanted to be painfully accurate I would put in the material properties 
of the base plate, which are shown as steel. The section properties of steel are two lines drawn in section. In plan view, I'm going to come in here and begin with a grid line going one direction. Grid lines are shown with a long line and typically two dashed lines in close proximity. I'm going to show a line the other way. This will just be a typical detail. And I'm going to begin by sketching out our column. And I said it was a W10. And the W10 we spoke about before was going to be nominally 10 inches deep. And I also know that a W10 is for the column shape is going to be 10 inches wide. So each square is 2 inches, 1, 2, 4 half a square there. I'm going to come down two, four, five inches this direction. Sketch it. And I'm going to sketch the flanges on the column. And the webs on the column. and the radiusing on the column. So our base plate we know is 16 by 16. So that'll be 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. There. There. And for graph paper, it worked real nice. Just kind of sketch out where you're going with those. I can tell at 16 by 16 it's going to be kind of tight because I'm trying to work in with these anchor rods. The anchor rods on a low-rise building in the Imperial system are probably going to be something on the order of three-quarter inch diameter if they're just gravity. If I were to come an inch in each direction just for quick talking purposes, each square is two inches so I'm coming a little in off the square I'm just going to put little X's right there. And that's showing me where the center line of the anchor rods are. And to call a plate out, this is important nomenclature. You call out the thickness of the plate first in inches by the length of the plate. In this case, one foot, four inches. Uh, and then you'll call out the cut length, which is also one foot four inches. That'd be for a 16 by 16 base plate. As I look at the example we'll do later, I already know that this configuration will be on a 18, 18 inch wide grade beam. And so this is coming out there. So there'll be one extra inch of width. And so what I'm drawing right now is the concrete edge of the grade beam below. And when you have a continuation of a member, you'll typically do a break mark. And that's showing it continues on. Grade beam. Yeah. One of the things I'm noting, what we talked about earlier, is these hold down, and these are anchor rod plates at the end, and in the example we're working on, it's a half inch plate, and we showed them five inches wide, and then the length is always shown in feet, 
in inches. And the reason is when you the first two numbers are the material stock you're purchasing. So it's shown the thickness and the width. And then the cut length is always shown in feet and inches because it's measured on the cut of the material length. And so it, it may seem counterintuitive that your first two dimensions are in inches and then your next one has a leading zero. But that has to do with how the plate is going to be fabricated. If I were to take that and look at this section, and then I also look at my grade beam below, where the width of the grade beam is 18 inches wide. I'm already starting to see a challenge I have here, because if I come two and a half inches out for that plate, and when it's covered up by material, we're going to use dotted lines. Again, this plate is, if you were pulling on the anchor rod, it anchors it into the concrete. This becomes a problem. That plate below is sticking outside the concrete, which is not acceptable, obviously. So, what you find, even from sketching, in this example, is that you need to widen the grade beam for this configuration to work or you need to do some other configuration of anchor rods so that these connection plates. Quite often these connection plates which are in the steel base plate detail um, are just done with a 2D uh, note, 2D sketch and notes in the construction drawings and so that when you, I'm going to darken these so we can see the part that's sticking outside the concrete so that when you begin to actually sketch this, you can very quickly start to understand that this connection needs some redesign. And this doesn't have anything to do with the numerical calculations. This is just the physical geometry we're trying to work out here. That concludes this video of showing how you could quickly start to work through a column base plate connection detail uh, through hand sketching and understand different connectability problems.